month. 19. You start up, Mum. Hello and welcome to the fan carpet. I'm Mikey Aveline and tonight I'm here at the Hackney Picture House for UK gala screening of Starred Up. Now it's the British prison drama featuring Jack O'Connell. So let's go talk to some of the cast and attendees. What was it like to work with such a fantastic cast? Yeah, right up there actually. You raised a very good point. Any memorable moments? Oh, several. Several. I mean, the whole thing turns into a bit of a blur. We had four weeks to get what we got. In terms of memorable, it'll be able to vouch for this. Uh, we got four of the, uh, the the inmates, fellow inmates, just so happened to be black lads, uh, f behind me, folding behind me, doing uh, backing, backing dancing and vocals. And I was leading. Ashley, so sorry to interrupt. What was that song we sang? Stand by we? me. I was just telling him. <laughs> yeah, so we were singing Stand by me. He was the lead singer and we're doing our dance and stuff. Yeah, so we had one. Wow! Yeah, it was good fun, yeah. Have you never done a character like that before? No, I bet you regret asking that question now, don't you? <laughs> no. You know, a script that came to me and, and I read the script and I thought... Something you've always wanted to do, this John? Well, no, I'm not really a genre guy, but there was something about the script that felt very honest uh, and, and it felt authentic and it felt very detailed and it felt like there was the opportunity to create an emotional heart and 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 you know so you know for me as a filmmaker who's been doing probably less hard films i thought great you can do something really hard down the line but you can smuggle in a little bit of heart a little bit of emotion and that's what we tried to do hopefully with some success i've heard it, it's very great and 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 uh yeah you know, it's a very positive experience of making the film pretty much everything that i wanted to put in there is in there so so what was your inspiration for this film? My inspiration for this film was my own life. Yes. Okay. You didn't know that, did you? That's no, I didn't. So I used to work in the prison system for 12 years, and I was uh, a therapist. I developed a new way of working with violent gang members in prison, and um, that's that's that was a huge part of the backdrop that I wanted to use for the film. And then in terms of the actual characters, particularly the three main characters, I took traumatized aspects of myself and then put them into play, interacting with each other to create the story. Had quite a tight time period. Yeah, but that was part of the magic of it, I think. You just, you know, you had to just go, go, go. You know. What do you want audiences to take away from watching this? Uh, I, I, th I think audiences will go on their own journey for a start. I hope that they that they feel that it's a satisfying journey, and and uh, 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 and that they have some feelings for this character who's not necessarily likable, but they they don't they you know there's, there's you know a sense that, that he maybe has a chance to redeem himself in some way. What sort of things do you want people to take away from this film? Well, people do ask me that, and actually I don't want anything for the audience. I think it's for the audience themselves to take away what, what they want. I have no desire for them to take anything away, but I hope they are engaged and that their sense of uh, curiosity and possibly wonder are activated. I'm excited. I've actually seen it already, but I'm excited to see it again because um, it's something we're proud of. It's brilliant. And tell us a little bit about how you got into character for this film. I've heard some rumours that the director made people sleep himself. All that sort of stuff was happening. Like, it's amazing. Like, it was actually shot in a real prison, which already gave us that feeling. And we had our we had our costumes early. Like, even when we were just rehearsing, we was wearing costumes. We was in a real prison, and we spent all our time for five weeks in that prison every day so it must have like affected your mood like quite low I didn't actually have to sleep in the prison like to get into character I was sleeping in the hotel 10 minutes away <laughs> but which was almost like a prison because I'm cheating I'm like I'm in a hotel it's just other guys all the cast of men and um, you're away from your families like if guys had girlfriends they couldn't see their girlfriends for all these weeks they'd just be messaging them missing them so we was all in that right frame of mind as if we was in prison and everyone was really concentrating on the job because it was such a great job to be I've already seen it. I've seen it twice already. Oh, yeah. Wow, big fan. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I saw it at the uh, London Film Festival. The we, we, we got we had a premiere at the London Film Festival last year, and then there was a, uh, a cast and crew screening um, a few months prior to that. So I've had the pleasure of seeing it a couple of times already. Yeah. You're probably getting a bit more critical now every time you watch it. No, I, I probably am going to watch it tonight. That's no. That, no, 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 no. You find yourself being less critical because the first time you watch it, you're very critical because you're concentrating on what you're doing. But then after a while you become more relaxed, objective and relaxed and you can watch it as an audience member. 
boys tend to play bad boys in films. Would you ever consider, you know, a different kind of character role? Yep. What sort of character? Uh, well, I, I mean, it's hard to say at this point, but the idea generally one day is to achieve a, a bit of versatility, you know, surprise people and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah do different shit, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. experiment perhaps. Yeah, no. He's just amazing. He's, he's right there. He's a force of nature. You have to say that. <laughs> he's, a, he's an absolute revelation. And he really didn't need any input from me at all, for sure, as the writer. He, he really lived and felt Eric and just, just went with it. A lot of the tabloids are saying this is his breakthrough role. Would you, you know, agree with that? I, I'm just a humble writer, you know, who am I to say? But I, I do feel that what, what he's done is, is amazing and uh, really, really powerful. What do you want people to take away from this film? I want them to be like, it's, um, it's raising awareness to what life is like inside a prison, but it's more than just the anger and the badness, it's what's behind the mind of that person who's committing these crimes and being angry. You see that some of these criminals, inside them there's a softness that just needs to be touched, it's never been reached before, and you find that with Jack O'Connell's character, you see that it, it, it's like he's holding it all in and he's this bad cat, bad kid but you see when he breaks down, I don't want to give away too much but you see he breaks down, he starts crying like there's a soft kid inside but maybe the world didn't reach out and find it and it, this is the film exposes that so What was it like to work with Jack? Uh, Jack's brilliant man, like he's just he's just, you have to say that He's just a local lad from Derby that likes to wear Reeboks like that's the truth like and that's what I love like everyone on this was very down to earth very simple and it's not nothing was glitz and glamour. We were just cool, like just cool kids, like driving around in a little Hyundai around Belfast. What sort of drew you to get involved in startup in the first place? Well, they came to me really. I, I was approached for the role of Spencer and um, to work with David McKenzie, who I, I think is a wonderful director, and, and also Ben Mendelsohn, I'm a massive fan of, and Jack O'Connell, I think, is a wonderful actor. I think he's, he's really going places. It's just a, a great opportunity and um, something. Well, I mean, I've played undesirable characters before. You played the bad guy in this film? Yeah, well, I played Top Dog on the Wing. Um, so he's he's like the daddy, if you like. Um, so he's, he's, I suppose he's an unsavoury character, but he he's he's a criminal within the system. So he's he's still working as a criminal within the system, and to make sure that the the wing is run quietly and he can go about his business without any disruptions. And obviously, Jack's character is quite a volatile. What's it like working with Jack? Disruption. He's great. He's got a lot of energy. Very positive. Very enthusiastic. Very passionate actor, and he works very hard. He worked really hard on the show. When you're not, you know, walking red carpets with your acting career, you're a musician as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not really a musician. It's more poetry, spoken word. Yeah, but I was, I was formerly involved in more music. But as I got older, like I'm a bit old now, I decided to um, convert that to more um, po poetry, spoken word. Because I like well, everything I was doing, tending to having good inspiration to youngsters. And spoken word, I felt like I could touch the hearts of m more people because they're more listening. So, yeah, I'm traveling in the world at the moment. Wow, you lucky. Yeah, just do Living the dream. What's next for you? I don't know exactly, but I might be doing an American TV pilot, uh, which I'm floating, floating around. So, which I don't yeah, know. Yeah, secret. That could be kind of fun. Memorable uh, moments on the... Um, yeah, we had a scene where we have a bit of a scuffle. We had a couple of scuffles, actually. Um, and we just threw ourselves into it. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I've I got know. a couple of bruises here. And oh, no! From who? Who gave those to you? Oh, from Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah to the fan carpet, what are you a fan of? Um, I'm a fan of good people, like anyone with a good heart. Like I love, I've, I've, I love people, I love good people with good hearts, man. I'm a fan of meditation uh, because it helps me manage my inner trauma. Did you have people meditating on set? I certainly did, <laughs> at times, but that's for sure. In the corner? <laughs> Just in the corner and, and in my hotel room a bit as well. Yeah. I'm a fan of lots of old movies, um, and I'm a fan of uh, all sorts of music. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan, you know, but I, I, the weird thing is I, I sort of live in a bit of a bubble. I don't, I'm not that into pop. 
been all like formed them into kind of old shit. You know, but, oh. you know, that's it's good vintage sort of thing. Well, not kind of vintage. School. Yeah, I mean, like kind of some great films from from the past, some great music from the past. You know. Uh, and, and I feel like there's almost there's enough of that. Uh, so, this, so, so very few of the, very little of the new stuff kind of actually gets through. <laughs> not because I'm trying not to, but I just like I've already got so many records and so many films to watch. You know. I'm a keen motorcyclist. Hi. I'm I'm obsessed with motorcycles. And are you any good? Yeah. Do you have a license? Of course, and I plan to race one day as well. Even though I'm probably too old. Yeah. I'm a fan. Of chess. Chess? I don't quite watch it, and I, don't, I couldn't tell you who's who and what's what, but I enjoy playing it. Okay. You might not have known that about me. Well, that's it from me and the fan carpet. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, and I'll see you next time. Startup means you're a leader.